Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What a start to the day. Here we are in the glorious National Trust countryside. Of course, Clumber Park, which I'm very fortunate to live on the doorstep of. Look at it. Sun's just up. Uh, I can't see the time, but it's before 8am. I believe and I thought I'd just bring the little tow rags out oh all right then I'll not film you doing that Reg and let them have a run around this field because it well the camera's not really doing it any justice it's somewhat picturesque a bit nippy but not too cold about eight degrees actually this morning and uh, Oh, Jesus Christ, Reggie. I wish you'd stay in one place. It's, <laughs> it's all right, I'll, I'll go and hunt the poo with my bags in a minute, shall I, mate? Yeah, well, thanks for that. All right. Yeah, so we've got a few things to do today. We need a new freezer for the kitchen at work. And I think what I'm going to do is take apart my home bar. You know, the kegerator or the keyser that I built a couple of years ago. Uh, and it was never quite the right size because I couldn't fit the 30 litre kegs in it. Only the corners. So, instead of buying a new freezer for the pub to go downstairs into the stock room, we'll repurpose that one and then buy a new one for moi. <laughs> well, it was ten past... Uh, Hold on a sec. Well, it was ten past eight when I just filmed that clip, and now it's eleven minutes past. After picking up some poo and starting to walk. Oh, yeah, the joys. Anyway, what I wanted to mention at the start of the video, ladies and gentlemen, is we have um, 12 beers of Christmas running again this year. Now, if you want to come and collect from the brewery, you can. There's 12 different beers in an advent calendar super duper but this year if you want them shipping nationwide then we'll do you the 12 beers minus the advent calendar box because they make these advent calendar boxes to kind of cover all the bases you can fit 500 mil bottles in there 500 mil cans 440 cans 330 cans 330 bottles and unfortunately that means they're made out of flimsy cardboard, single wall, and there's a lot of room in them. A lot of uh, a lot of space when you put the 440s in. So the cans rattle around a little bit, and of course, that's just going to lead to damage in the post. Whereas we send our beers out in double walled cardboard boxes for 12 and 24 packs, and they're rock solid. So we'll do that instead. So if you want to jump onto the website, harrisonsbrewery.com forward slash shop, you'll see that we've got, we've got both 12s and 24 beers of Christmas available for you to buy. So shoot over and get them while they're hot. By the way, there is a new um, Nipa called Secret City with Vic Secret Hops and El Dorado and buy it's a beauty boys she's a beauty you don't want to miss out on that who's the biggest knobhead come here then oh well done Raj you won a prize for being the biggest knobhead get out of it have I um have I told you how much of a twat Reggie is so if anyone hello Chancy boy if anyone comes to the house, or sometimes we'll have him in the brewery, or even when I'm walking him, if anybody approaches him or he sees a person who he doesn't know, he barks like a lunatic, pulls at his lead, looks really vicious. And then as soon as they come up to him, he's like this. He's like a jelly tot, soft as pudding and twice as thick. So, uh yeah, if you ever see Reg out and about, 
I'm thinking about getting him a jacket that says on the front, you know, you get these doggy jackets that say, uh, I'm nervous or, you know, I'm a shy dog. We're going to get Reggie one. Hi, Viz. That just says, I'm a twat. Wrong way, Chance. Come on, old timer. Down here, pal. Chance and the twat. So before we do any relocating of freezers or any of the kind, I first got to label about 500 cans of pail. So I'm just going to stand here for a little bit of time, one by one, labelling these bad boys. can go quicker than this of course well I'm two-handed but we're filming as you're well aware so the MT50 is still kicking ass I think it's worth every single penny as you can see it's so simple and if you're gonna buy one of these if you're in the market for a labeling machine then without a doubt I recommend getting the date coder version because it means you can have your labels printed in bulk and save a little bit of money in that respect and then just wipe your batch codes and best before dates on as they are needed. Anyway, I'm going to do this for another 40 minutes and then we'll see what else we're up to today boys and girls. So, our staff, as lovely as they are, seem to think it's a good idea to keep coming downstairs during the middle of a fuel crisis and advancing the central heating boiler for the pub to permanently on 24 7. Right? And then I've come in Tuesday morning, we don't open till 3 o'clock, and the place is absolutely stonking hot. So that is obviously money doing the drain. So what I'm going to do is have a look at the wiring on this controller for the boiler, which is fine for me to take apart. I don't need to have gas safe registration to have a look at the electrics on this machine, only the gas fittings. And uh, what we're going to do is just take this front panel off and we are going to change out, if I can get one for a decent price, this controller for a digital controller with a mobile thermostat which we can have up behind the bar. Then I can set this for seven days, hopefully lock it in, and then obviously if the pub is um, empty, or even full and the heating's on at least it's not on all the time and it like, like clicks off when it gets to I don't know 18 20 degrees or whatever whereas the way it's set up at the minute if it's on it's on there's no thermostatic valves on any of the radiators and obviously there's no upstairs thermostat either so it's just absolutely belting fuel and something needs doing about it so let's whip this panel off and have a look how this particular unit here which is a grassing uh, unit let's see how this is wired up I imagine it's going to be better, very similar to the ones that I've got on the control panel for the brewery to be fair okay so I've put the light on so it's a bit easier to see front of the panel obviously unscrewed from the top it folds down taking the main cover off this cover just sits over the top there there's all the stuff I'm not allowed to touch because I haven't had the one day course, you know, to be a turd cowboy. Anyway, so looking in here, we've got obviously uh, mains coming in along here with a couple of switch lives which go out to certain parts of the boiler. And uh, 
same with all these control wires here they control obviously any feedback uh, to say that the boiler is actually working and all that kind of jazz we're not interested in this circuit board or this side here what we're interested in is this feed here now this is the timer feed that comes out in this little cable over to here and uh, bearing in mind that this is live this is the timer module which uh, I've taken out so if I turn it round you'll be able to see there we have the timer module and on the back we can see we have come on young man alright I just want to just fall over we'll put it in there to have a look we have uh, 50 hertz 240 volts in live in neutral out and on this side here on terminals 3 and 4 that is your switched live for the central heating so there's a breaker in there effectively it's normally open you can put it on normally closed but it's normally open uh, in fact there isn't a normally closed terminal on here there is a marking for it but the terminal doesn't exist look it's missing so as long as we can find a remote thermostatic controller of the same size and makeup which these are pretty much a standard anyway you see these two offset screws screw into these opposing corners here there and there and that's how uh, they hold in so you'll you'll learn about this when you want to put one of these controllers for instance into maybe your brew panel so you can turn on your HLT before you arrive in the morning for your brew day and you want to fit this in the panel and you've cut a nice hole for everything to go through on the front of the panel and you realize you've chopped out the area where the screw fixings will go and uh, I've done that in the past and it's been a bit of a bum hole so now we know what we're looking at here we're going to go for a, a live in neutral in and then a switch live on the uh, boiler interface if you like and then of course that will have built in because we've got live coming to this unit the new one will have built in a um, receiver I don't know what it's going to be working on and our radio frequency receiver maybe uh, maybe even work on Wi-Fi I don't know we'll have a look what we can buy from tool station or screw fix and there will be a remote uh, thermostat upstairs digital one that takes batteries and you'll be able to just like press up press down on it probably touch screen to control the temperature in the pub so let's go and have a look what we can get and uh, what is available for us at Screwfix so tool station came up trumps today hold on we don't need the light on out here and uh, out of tool station and screw fix they must still be having supply issues because tool station was the only person with a wireless thermostat under under 150 pounds so we've gone for the Honeywell home TR3 seven day programmable wireless thermostat and what do you get for your money this was, uh, I think it was £109 or 79 I can't remember which. So you get a remote thermostat which will have a stand that clips in and uh, this sits in the room whose temperature you'd like to control. And then in here we have a receiver digital receiver box, wireless receiver box with uh, a quick little override button on there and uh, oh, I hope there are some uh, strain relief clips in there we've got quick installation guide programmable thermostat normal guide I would imagine We've got some quad board, 
we've got two AA batteries rolling around in the bottom of the box. Well, at least they provided some. <gasps> Alkaline. We shall see. We shall see if we use them or not. Uh, here we have a stand. Here we have something else and something else entirely. Aha, there's the strain reliefs for that. I was hoping so. And some screws. So let's get all this together and have a look exactly what we have to do. So in the comfort of my ice cold workshop, I've taken the opportunity to terminate the end of some forecourt cable in there. So we've got live and neutral. There's a space to park an earth cable. You don't need one. And then this other live here is in case you want to have a switching live. And then uh, we've got the switch relay for the heating. And they're just in there, the grey and the black. So it doesn't matter which way around they go, to be honest. And uh, then we're going to terminate that bad boy at the other end in the boiler in place of the timer. So we're going to take the cables off the timer and we're going to pair them up with the other end of this. And this is going to sit on the wall somewhere accessible when we find out we can get a signal to that box, for instance. And then once we've figured that out, we'll mount this on the wall in an appropriate pr place. We'll route the cable. This is just a bit of spare forecore I, I'm knocking about. We'll route this flex back to the boiler. We'll clip it all in onto the wall. I don't think I've got any trunk in, but if we have, we'll use the trunk in. Won't we, Reggie? And then, uh, <laughs> yes. Then we should be able to pair it and hello young man hello you cute little weirdo and uh, yeah distractions aside this works so we should be able to then control the temperature of the pub from behind the bar perfect mundo okay so I've wired up the Honeywell home wireless receiver and I've just stuck it on to the click click the cliff quick test for now and we've got the transmitter so as you can see the little I better not put it there because I'll knock it off I know I will so this light here indicates the heating's working so we've got it on manual so I'm just gonna turn it I'm just gonna turn it on and bosh I heard it straight away it clicked on so I'm now gonna go all the way up to the bar this way ladies and gentlemen all the way up to the bar and we're gonna see if we've still got a signal up here for a start the other side of a fire door Let's put it there where we can see it nice and easily. And then we're going to swing the lid up and we're going to turn it off. Off. And then the flame's gone out. Let's go downstairs and see if the digital box has turned off. And if it has, that means we've got a good enough signal. Yes, indeed it has. It's just the connection light. So that's perfect. So what I'm going to do now is take the cables off of this section of the clock. We're going to put maybe some type of, um, I'm thinking, uh, Wago connector on there. And then we're going to send this onto the wall. Maybe like there, or there, something like that. It needs to be a meter away, apparently, or a foot, should I say, away from the boiler. And then once we've got it mounted, well, Robert's your mother's brother. I'll put this back together. We should have programmable heating from the bar rather than the boiler. 
So I've managed to run the cables around on this, uh, let's call it a cable tray for want of a better term. And we've got the Wi-Fi box up there, not Wi-Fi, but you know what I mean. So look, no heating. I don't know if you can see with that overexposed light. Push the button, which is an advanced button. Now you see a green light for heating. And the heating should be on upstairs. These are my tools. take back next door with some tie wraps which I used as a strain relief for inside the um, boiler then I need the destructions is that both of them ah oh, here's the other one and then we're gonna run upstairs and program it but I ain't gonna bore you with all that detail oh my god yeah, so I'm not going to bore you with all the programming nonsense. Instead, we're just going to move on to the next clip. Oh, boys and girls, I'm bloody freezing. I've just sat upstairs and answered a few emails for a few curious people that want to know how and what we do for canning and all this cask washing and all that kind of stuff and uh, yeah I've also replied to everybody who's ordered an advent calendar to come and collect them because they're now ready and yeah can you see that that says nine degrees in here well trust me when you sat still doing nothing for as long as I just have been oh my god it feels a lot worse. Right, I'm gonna treat myself. I'm gonna take a couple of cans of this uh, Secret City Nipah home with me. Now, the reason I'm doing this, of course, is because I ran out of labels. Yeah, yeah, any excuse, Harry. And because I've run out of labels, well, I can't sell them, can I? So, it is now, as far as I'm concerned, homebrew <laughs> so I'll just get one of these uh, carry handle things to clip on to the top of those four beautiful looking beers I was gonna go to the gym tonight but I went last night and I can't move my friggin arms Ah, and this cold weather is making me stiffer. Ooh, matron. So there we go. Four cans of Secret City going in the car. And that means, because it's already dark outside, we're signing off, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll see you tomorrow. Friggin' right we will. <laughs>